Hey, welcome back to the Engineering Workshop. I'm Hunter White. In this episode, we're going to build this scrap wood cart. Thanks for watching. My problem statement is to build a mobile cart to organize scrap wood and special project wood. My only constraints for this project is that it must be 16 inches by 24 inches by 75 inches tall to fit next to my gun safe in my shop. My specifications is that it needs to be made from materials found at home goods stores, have varying size compartments for different wood storage, be on casters and mobile, and then be modular so I can change the design in the future. For my digital prototype, I'm using Fusion 360. And this shows all the design and assembly steps that I modeled in Fusion 360 for the scrap wood cart. And if you're wondering, I definitely model this fast. This is not a 30 second representation of six hours of my life. So to start off this build, I'm going to make the base, which is just cutting down some 2x4s to get ready to mill them in the table saw and then run them through the planer. And you'll see that process in a second. I mill all the 2x4s down to 3 inches. I do this by cutting about a quarter inch off the first side. And then when I get that side flat, I've taken all the round over off, I'll set the fence to as close to 3 inches as I can get. And then I will mill that side at 3 inches. In my last step in my lumber milling process is to run them through the planer. Uh, when I buy 2x4s, they come pretty consistent at 1.5 inches thick, so running them through the planer makes them a little short, usually 1.45 inches, but it's been much better for me to have them all flat and consistent than it is actually 1.5 inches thick. One of my trademark processes in milling 2x4 lumber is to mill my half lap joinery as well. I have made this little table saw sled that I use um, and a 3 quarter inch dado stack. I set to mill you know, halfway through the 2x4 and I get really consistent clean joints every time. You can see this here as I glue up the joinery, everything stays really square, goes together really nice um, and I only use screws as really clamps to hold it together while the glue's drying. Um, I've never had any issues with any of the shop furniture that I've made of it coming apart or cracking or warping or anything like that. A super strong square way to join stuff. Um, and I just like this a whole lot more than plywood. I just have always felt like plywood was never as strong as a, a two by four constructed frame. So um, this is my method and uh, this is what I like to do. And to achieve mobility for the scrap wood cart, you see me applying casters. Um, I do have affiliate links in the description for these off Amazon. They have been wonderful. I've used them on the CNC enclosure, the scrap wood cart, and I've got something very similar on the, my flip top cart that I've made. Uh, great caster and uh, highly recommended. Check out the links in the description if you're interested in getting these. Next is to cut the plywood for the cabinet. So I'm breaking my sheets of plywood down with a skill saw and then I take it up to the table saw to actually get straight lines. So I'm using the factory edge against the fence and then uh, cutting a straight line on the table saw. So I don't really rely on my skill saw to get a straight cut. Um, kind of wish I had a track saw. To make the end square, I'm using my miter saw um, because I can rely on that fence to be straight and then give me a good 90 degree cut here. Let's flip it over because I can't quite cut that deep. Um, next step is I'm marking out where all my datos are going to be for the internal dividers. And this is really nice to have plans because I'm able to do sequential or cascading dimensions starting from the top makes it super easy to mark uh, with a tape measure. To cut the dados, I'm using this router jig I made. Um, the folding piece that you see is precisely the distance from the edge of my router to the center of my bit. So all I got to do is on the lines that I drew, I line up that guide um, with each mark on each side of the board so that I get it straight. And then that is the center line of where my router bit's gonna be. So that edge helps me line it up and then I flip that edge out of the way and I'm able to reset my router. So this has been super fast. I'm really glad I made this jig um, and highly recommend it if you are gonna try to use a router over and over again. Um, you can use this almost anywhere and you could probably make it as long as you wanted to um, and keep it straight so that you could uh, cut straight dados with a router super easy. The next step is to continue breaking down the three quarter inch oak plywood for the top and bottom. Um, and now that I finally got the pieces small enough, I can do this on the table saw, so it's really nice. And I'm using pocket hole joinery to assemble the top and the sides together. And you see me cutting pocket holes again 
on the opposite sides because I screwed up and I cut them on the wrong sides to begin with. Oh well. Assembly with pocket hole screws goes pretty quick. I just use a carpenter square to make sure everything is uh, square and 90 degrees at the corners. A little bit of glue and then uh, use some pocket, holes, pocket hole screws to tighten everything down. To assemble the plywood frame uh, to the 2x4 base, I'm using glue because I don't ever intend to take this thing apart. And then uh, once I get that plywood frame set on the base, I will use screws to kind of clamp it down or in lieu of clamps. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that there is a little edge there that I purposely left so that the black back plywood had a place to sit. And you see that right here. The next step is to start cutting out the dividers. I'm using half inch plywood for this. Uh, just something cheap that I found at the Home Depot, but um, didn't want to use like nice birch or anything like that. Just trying to save money. Um, I cut it on the miter saw because it was just easier than trying to move, maneuver those big pieces on the table saw. Um, and I got them really close here, so which is nice because they're a friction fit. Not using any glue in case I ever want to store bigger pieces of wood, I can take these out. Next, I'm cutting the vertical dividers. This is still half inch plywood and there's actually three different sizes. There's a top, which is small, and then a medium for the middle, and then a large for the bottom. These vertical dividers were also cut to be a friction fit. Um, so I've got a couple of pencil marks that kind of help me get them lined up and straight. And then I'm just kind of pressing these into uh, the spaces that they're supposed to fit at, um, measured very precisely so that they do have that friction fit. And I come back with some CA glue and I'm applying the CA glue only on the front face. Um, as you see here, and that is so that um, if I ever wanted to take these out to make this uh, more change the organization in the future, um, I could just break this little CA glue tab in the front. And the final step in construction is to cut the back panels. I'm using quarter inch plywood. This is stuff I had scrap in the in the shop, but you can get this at Home Depot also. This plays a very important role in the assembly, and that's keeping the plywood frame, the three quarter inch frame, from racking back and forth. This keeps everything square. So I do recommend using this, but if you wanted larger pieces to be able to stick out the back, you could omit this step. Okay, that was a bit dramatic for finishing a scrap wood cart, but we were pretty excited. We did actually get that done in a day. Um, so that's kind of nice to actually do a shop project that you can do in an afternoon. Um, and finally, here we are just getting rid of that old scrap wood cart that we've been carting around from house to house and uh, organizing it, which was, is more fun than we would have thought. I can say it's been really nice being able to see all the actual scrap wood pieces I have available. If you want to make the scrap wood cart for your shop, I have build plans available on my Etsy shop, which is Hunter's EW store or Hunter's Engineering Workshop store. Um, I really like having plans in the workshop. It makes everything fast. Now, these are full color plans, super easy to follow. If you like the video, please consider subscribing and give the video a thumbs up so other people can find it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, welcome back to the Engineering Workshop. I'm Hunter White. In this episode, we're going to build ah, the scrap wood cart. Thanks for watching.